when a neurodivergent child is newly recognised, diagnosed or otherwise identified, how do we go about sharing that information with them? That's the topic of today's episode of Pookie Ponders. Let's dive straight in. Okay, so off the bat, I'm going to start with just strong advice. Normally, I think it's really important that those people working with and caring for children find the route that suits them best. But when it comes to sharing labels around neurodivergence, I feel really strongly that it's very important that we do share this learning about our child with our child. This is not something that we should be ashamed of or hiding from. This is something that a child needs to learn to embrace, get curious about, explore, find their tribe, etc. So, yeah, that's my personal opinion that this is not something we should be hiding from our children, but rather exploring with them. Generally, by the time that we get to the point of a diagnosis or a label, we would have been exploring this with them for some time anyway. And so hopefully it doesn't come as too much of a surprise. And so perhaps we're thinking more about the nuance of, well, what does this mean and what next and so on. But yes, I feel strongly it's important that they need to know. Next, we need to think about how we're going to frame these conversations, whether this during the process of exploring whether our child might be neurodivergent or following that label being clarified, applied, whatever has happened. And it's important to recognize here that there are many different journeys here. Some people will be self-identifying. Some people might just have noticed traits. Others will have gone through a very long winded and formal process. Others might be on a long wait list for that process and in the process be treating as if and identifying with Wherever you are and whatever journey that you have taken, let's think about how we're going to talk about neurodivergence and the different conditions that that covers. And I would suggest that we talk about them in a celebratory way, that we talk about them as differences rather than deficits, and that we think about the strengths that these conditions bring, because they do. Sure, every neurodivergence will bring with it some challenges too, because we live in a neuro typical world. And so it's not quite designed for those of us who are neurodivergent. However, we are each brilliant in our own ways. And so let's celebrate the strengths. And particularly, let's think about which of those strengths perhaps are part of the fact that we think and feel and experience the world a little bit differently than our peers. And let's see the good in that as well as noticing the challenges. Our children need to learn to see this through a positive lens. Otherwise, they're going to grow up to be negative and bitter and feel, why did this happen to them? This isn't a horrible thing that's happened to them. It's a difference that sometimes we need to learn to overcome. But we also need to learn to embrace and make the very, very most of. So whilst our children need to know that, yeah, they're a little bit different, and it is important that they do know that and that they understand that other people experience the world in a different way to them. Because remember, your child only has their own experience to draw on. The only way they've ever experienced the world, unless they have had some sort of traumatic brain injury, but the only way that most children will have experienced the world is the way in which they experience the world. We don't get the chance to put on someone else's shoes for the day and experience the way that they think, feel, behave and respond to the world around them. We just have our own experience. And so we need to help our children to understand that they do experience things a little bit differently. This is also helpful for our children to see things through this lens because sometimes they will beat themselves up about, but why can my friend do this and I can't? Why do I struggle with this when other people don't seem to? This is something that we need to learn as neurodivergent people that other people find things easier because they experience it in a totally different different way to us. That's something as someone who was really late diagnosed, I actually found it really helpful to understand. Suddenly I knew why I want to go to my friend's weddings and I do, but it takes such a huge emotional and physical and mental toll on me. Why was that when everyone else seemed to be having a great time? Ah, I know now it's because I'm autistic, but I didn't know that then. And I used to beat myself up and think, why am I dreading this thing that everyone else has been looking forward to for months? So we need to emphasize that being different doesn't mean our children are broken, defunct, deficit in any way. They need to know this is not a bad thing, but just that we're different in the same way that we might celebrate 
other differences to do with gender or ethnicity and those sorts of things. We, we need to just celebrate that we're all different and, and that that is OK, but they're not broken. But yeah, do explore and get curious with them about the way in which perhaps they experience the world and how this might be different than someone else. Again, think about how you might do this through a positive lens. So an example might be if you have a child who has different sensory experience than their peers, perhaps they have really heightened senses. That's very common in our neurodivergent children. We might think about how sometimes that makes things a little bit difficult. Maybe when you go into the supermarket and the smells and the sounds and the lights and everything like that becomes rather overwhelming and it can feel a bit too much to manage. But then we can think about how in other situations, that ability to really, really zone into our senses and to experience them on a different level to other people might be really brilliant. So for example, both my daughter and I absolutely love the scent of roses. Her middle name is Rose for that reason, in fact. Um, and so if we are walking anywhere near Anywhere with fragrant roses, one of us will pick up that waft from quite a distance away and we will go and seek out those roses and smell them and really enjoy them. And sure, loads of people can enjoy the scent of roses, but not many people could enjoy them to quite the blissful level that myself and Lyra can. So think with your child about their differences, how these might play out, how this might sometimes make things harder for them than their peers, is a way of kind of beginning to explore and explain why sometimes they find things harder and that's okay and we need to start forgiving ourselves for that and beginning to think about adjustments we might make but also think about how those differences when flipped and in a different situation can actually be something really really positive too. Another example of this would be special interests or hyper focus or deep interests or whichever phrase you might want to use. If you have a child who has a particular passion, interest, hobby that they want to really, really focus in on, then that again is something that can mark them out as neurodivergent and different than their peers. Perhaps all their friends are moving on all the time and doing different things and shifting between activities, whilst your child wants to really focus in on the one thing that they really love all the time. This can make it different difficult in terms of social interaction with their peers. Their peers may not get it and it can make it hard to make and sustain friends. But if we flip that, think about what an absolute expert your child has become in this thing that they spend so much of their time dedicated to learning about, exploring, practicing. And we can think about how across a lifetime that again can be a really positive thing. Whether their interest remains the same or might move on over time, we can guarantee that when they are older, if supported to enter the world of employment or voluntary work on a topic that they really love, they will be the very, very best employee or volunteer that an organisation could ever hope to look for because the passion and expertise that they'll bring will be so far beyond what their neurotypical peers are likely to bring to that topic. Another thing we should think about when in these early stages of exploring um, the label and what it means for the child and for us is thinking about who needs to know and what do they need to know and how are we going to tell them and why are we telling them? What are our expectations on them? Kind of coming out with this new identity can be a really big stage for people. We might want to think about do their friends need to know and what do they need to be told? There's lots of really great evidence that when children are taught about neurodivergence, that they can be really great peers and friends um, to their neurodivergent peers. When they don't know and they don't understand why some of their friends are a little bit different, then it can be harder for them to be kind or to be a good friend in the way that is needed and to understand the challenges faced by their peers. Because remember, just like the child we're thinking about today, who's only got their experience of the world in the neurodivergent way, and they don't know that other people don't experience things in this same way that might be somewhat challenging, their peers, their neurotypical peers, also only have their own experience to draw on. So if the neurotypical peer does not feel pain when they hear loud sounds, then when that loud sound sounds and your child seems to be in physical and emotional pain as a result of that, your neurotypical child is going to be thinking, well, what's going on with them? Why are they doing that? Why are they making a fuss? What's this all about? Because they don't know. So education can be a really important thing here. So we might think about whether their peers need to be um, educated and this is something that 
that school will often work really hard with us on to really promote that understanding and think how this can work well within a class setting. We might think about whether um, there are different people within life at home or life at school who need to be aware of this and what we need to tell them because helping them to understand the way in which the child experiences the world so that then they're in a position to support and help when needed can make a really big difference. Think with your child here about the things that make a big difference to them. What are the things that adults can do that make things better, make life easier for them, make them more able to manage and cope and thrive and enjoy their day-to-day -day life? And then on the other hand, what are the things that adults or indeed children may do that make things worse, that make it harder for them to cope and thrive? Have these conversations at times of calm and share the information with people that you and your child have agreed between you really need to know. It can also be really helpful to have ongoing conversations between home and school because at home and at school we learn different things about what works well for a child and sometimes different relationships will mean different conversations are had. So having really good relationships between home and school can often mean that everyone can do a better job of supporting the child. These conversations do need to happen at times of calm so that we can explore when we're feeling relatively regulated, calm and happy, what will help in those more challenging times and indeed what are the things that make us feel really, really great. Um, if we wait until moments when we are dysregulated, then it's very, very difficult to go into that kind of problem solving, speaking, thinking kind of mindset that is needed to have these sorts of conversations. So definitely be doing it at a time of calm and sharing proactive rather than reactively. The next thing we might want to do, having learned about the differences that our child is experiencing compared to their neurotypical peers, is to find some role models for them or a tribe or some buddies. Essentially, we want to help them feel that, okay, you experience the world differently than lots of other people. But there are some people who do share your experience, who experience things in a somewhat similar way. And yeah, we are all different, every single one of us. But your child needs to understand that they are not the only person who experiences some of the things that they're experiencing. So let's help them to find other people who share this with them. It can be really helpful if there are any kind of groups through school or other settings that they're attending, if they can meet other children who experience the world in a similar way. This is helpful because those children will really get them. We often find that communication and collaboration between children who um, have similar challenges in day-to-day -day life, whether that's to do with neurodivergence or whether that's to do with other experiences they're having or other special needs or mental health issues they might have. When children have shared experience of any kind, it can be really helpful to bring them together because they get each other. They have many sort of shortcuts that they can leap over because they're not constantly having to explain themselves because there's someone here who just gets it because they have a similar experience and that's great. And it can make our child feel less alone. And of course, the context that a peer brings is fantastic because this peer is experiencing this world at this time in this way um, and so they have much more than just the shared kind of neurotype if you like um, having a buddy who's at your same school or club and living it right now at a similar kind of age um, and a similar time in history can be really helpful because talking to someone who perhaps has similar differences to you but was at school 30 years ago your experiences are likely to be really different I find this with my own daughters they're 13 now um, and whilst we're all autistic and there's lots that I can share with them about my experiences and the way that the world feels for me and the things that I do to manage it I cannot support them uh, directly from my own experience about what it feels like to be a 13 year old girl in a world full of social media and TikTok and so on because it didn't exist when I was their age. And so actually them finding people who are a similar age to them who really get it makes much more difference in that regard. We can also help our child to find their tribe through things like online or groups that we might join. And we can look to do things like find role models. Often children will find it really inspiring to discover that some famous people have got similar neurotype to them and might experience the world in a similar way. And there's lots of really great information that you can find online if you want to find famous people that your child might identify with who shares their neurotype. This can just help your child to feel less alone and 
gives them people um, to aspire to, makes them realise that there are people out there who've done really brilliant and wonderful things in a whole wide um, range of different arenas who share their neurotype. So it helps them to continue to aspire high and realise that this is not any kind of sentence on them. It's just a different way of experiencing the world and their journey towards their goals might be different than their peers, but they can indeed aim for the things that they want to aim for. A final way of kind of helping with that whole like tribe and peer thing um, can be identifying with people who've got similar special interests. So you might not specifically be hunting out um, peers who have the same neurotype. You might be hunting out peers who also love Dungeons and Dragons or whatever happens to be a special interest of your child. And finding their tribe that way can also help. Depending on what their special interests are and the things that your child enjoys spending their time on, we do find quite often um, that there will be shared neurotypes in those sorts of groups as well. Not always, but often. But we're looking here for that sense of belonging and connection and really embracing those things that matter to your child and the ways in which they are are experiencing the world. Finally, it's really important when we're thinking with our child about their way they experience the world and these conversations that we're having now that we're starting to understand a little bit better and maybe identifying with a particular label, that we see this as an ongoing conversation. This is not a kind of conversation you're going to sit down and have with your child once and then that's it, that's done. Because they're going to continue to grow and mature. Their understanding of their experience of the world will also continue to grow and mature and they and you will continue to learn more and more about them um, and about their condition and their experiences of the world. And so actually, we want to be curious all the time. We want to keep checking back in, see how things are feeling, see what else we can be doing, thinking about the different adjustments that we might be able to make to make life feel a little bit more manageable for them, understanding and recognizing when things go wrong and what we can learn from that, understanding and recognizing when things go right and seeing what we can learn from that. This is not a one-time conversation. This is an ongoing dialogue over time and one that if we can, we should approach with excitement, with enthusiasm, with joy and always, always remembering to remind our child that this does not change them. This label, this diagnosis, this identity may become a really important part of who they are and they might proudly wear it and shout about it. Many of us are really proud to tell people of our neurotype. But it doesn't change fundamentally who they are. They're not going to be a different child after we've made this discovery and we've learned a bit more about them than they were before. They're the same child, but what has changed is our understanding of their experience of the world. So the same child, but perhaps we are now able to adapt their world, to adapt the way in which we support them so that they can experience the world in a slightly better way. We might be able to be kinder to them and enable them to be kinder to themselves, to be a bit more forgiving of where our limitations might be and actually perhaps to be a bit more encouraging about those bits where we can really expand leaning into things like those special interests and seeing that as a real strength. So they have not fundamentally changed but the way in which that we as their supporting adults and they as a child who's beginning to learn about themselves can treat themselves and make adjustments might start to change and that might begin to really make a difference with their ability to, to cope and thrive, which is fantastic. But they're the same person with or without the label. If you found this helpful, or indeed any of my many, many, many other resources helpful, then you can support my work in a number of ways. You could subscribe, please subscribe, to my podcast or my YouTube channel. You can share my work as widely as you like. I love it when my work is widely shared. The more people it can reach and impact, then the bigger the smile on my face. You can take the next step and become part of my community of patrons who join me for a pound a month just as a way, really, of supporting my work, showing that they want to be a part of this community and also influencing the topics that I choose to share and getting early sight of everything that I create. Um, you can then also take the next step if you want to and book me to speak either online or face to face uh, for your setting or at your next event. Whichever way you choose to support, thank you so much for your support and thank you also for your support of the children and young people in your care. What you do every day really, really matters. So thank you for that. That's all for today. So over and out.